OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Hi everyone, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to this afternoon's webinar, Easy Projects with Microsoft Office. And today we're focusing on part three, Microsoft Forms. So welcome to the webinar. Go ahead and grab a seat. Any seat you'd like, lots of seats, lots of open chairs in the front, in the back, on the sides. We're happy to have you here. Um, again, we're here for e uh, easy projects with Microsoft Office, and today we're talking about Microsoft Forms with Barry Bikin. And um, Barry, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Anthony. I appreciate that, and I appreciate uh, your being here uh to support everything um and hopefully uh everything will go smoothly as i was uh sharing with you i'll share with everybody else i am um experimenting with having uh dual monitors and uh sometimes things things are still getting lost sometimes like where's the mouse you know but um hopefully we'll we'll get through it um but if you do, if you don't mind, do keep ahead and uh, keep an eye on the chat and um, the question and answers and feel free to interrupt me uh, when you see uh, something that uh, needs to be addressed uh, rapidly. So I'll go ahead and uh, share my screen and hopefully we'll uh, just we'll do this well and it, it shouldn't be a problem uh, and we'll we'll get started. Okay, and if you and for all the rest of you, if you see me uh, looking over to one direction, it's because I actually have a third monitor, uh, a second device, so I can see sort of at times what it is that uh, that you're viewing uh, as well. But in any case, let me go ahead and get the presentation started. Let's hopefully it's not going to be uh, too confusing. And uh, so anyway, I'm Barry Bakin. Okay, so in any case, um, I am uh, what our uh, school district uh, division of adult and career education calls an instructional technology teacher advisor, which is a uh, an out of classroom position uh, for the most part, uh, where we are available to assist teachers with uh, integrating technology uh, into instruction, which uh, you know, has been increasingly important uh, since the beginning of the year. Uh, and I'm also what's called the subject matter expert for OTAN, uh, uh, for which uh, my duties involve uh, these types of uh, webinars, uh, as well as, uh, you know, back in the old days, uh, you know, face-to-face -face presentations um, as well. Um, and there's a brief little some brief information about uh, OTAN. Uh, everybody hopefully is already familiar with OTAN, but if you're not, it's really a great uh, organization and uh, can be very, very helpful. Okay, anyway, sorry for all that, uh, but it should make you feel better uh, as providers because even those of us who are bold enough to call ourselves subject matter experts and teach instructional technology teacher advisors, you know, th this whole experience is uh, not always smooth. Okay, so let's see what happens next. There we go, we're back to that one. Okay, so some objectives. Uh, hopefully by the end of this webinar, uh, you will be able to demonstrate to your ESL, AB and academic students uh, several separate projects using Microsoft Forms, which is part of Office 365. Um, so um, your students can practice vocabulary, grammar, demonstrate master, mastery of content. And then also uh, you should be able to create forms uh, for yourself. Uh, so two comments about that. One, um, and, and this is true for myself as well, uh, I've mostly, uh, you know, used Google Forms. So there's uh, 
good and bad uh, in that. Uh, you know, you, you'll be uh, adding another uh, arrow uh, to your quiver by being able to do, uh, you know, use multiple platforms. Um, and then a lot of, you know, what you decide to do also depends on what is available to your students. So in our uh, division, actually in our school district, you know, students uh, have access uh, to both Google and to uh, Office 365. So again, it, uh, a lot depends on, uh, you know, what you think uh, will, will serve your students uh, the most. There are uh, some features, um, you know, that are distinct between the two. Uh, on the good side also, if you are already familiar with um, Google Forms, most of the menus and templates are uh, rather um, easy to understand, uh, but we're going to run through those today as well. Uh, and then finally, um, one of the reasons why I hadn't really used uh, Forms uh, to any great extent previously um, is that it's only part of the Office 365. And so uh, it, it, it was in my practice to mostly use uh, the downloaded loadable version of Office. And so it wasn't even, you know, an option. But in any case, I think that uh, it's, you know, it's always good uh, to learn more platforms. So uh, hopefully uh, we'll move forward with that. So um, this is the third uh, of a series of workshops. Uh, some of this uh, may be repetitive if um, you've uh, participated in either of the uh, previous two workshops in the series. But um, the, um, this aspect is really the same no matter what platform you're using or what uh, app you're using is adapting the projects to online instruction. And so uh, obviously these things work in the classroom as well. Uh, but you know, you, you may have to uh, take a few extra moments to try to understand uh, how you can uh, make the best use of the online environment. Uh, and, uh, you know, my, my the good example uh, that I've used uh, uh, the first couple of times is, for example, a project which, you know, used to be, you know, you, you print out your picture and you, uh, you know, write a, a paragraph about yourself and then that gets, you know, printed out and posted on the wall. And so uh, in the online format, um, you know, most of the learning management systems have some sort of profile. And so instead of printing out your paragraph uh, on a piece of paper and hanging it on the wall, you know, then that project can be adapted to uh, working within the profile of your learning management system. So that would be something that since I don't know, uh, you know, about all of the different learning management systems that you may be using, that would be something that you'd want to um, think about how these are adaptable uh, to the learning management system uh, that you're using. Uh, same thing goes for presenting the instructions. You know, how do you do these things? Uh, do you have Zoom or one of the other, uh, you know, uh, webinar systems to use? Uh, how would you get the instructions? Would you do it, you know, in an in-person uh, synchronous webinar? Or would you do it, you know, by posting the directions or a PowerPoint of the directions? Again, this would all be up to you. So uh, let's go ahead first and do a, uh, a needs analysis. Oh, actually, I see there's a question uh, in the chat, in the I'm sorry, in the question and answer, uh, and it says, uh, "Will this work on Word 2016?" Uh, I think the answer is whether or not uh, this is uh, your, you know, if you're talking about the downloadable desktop version where it resides on your computer, or whether or not you're using the Office 365. I think the answer to that is. 
you know, Office 365, you have to update constantly and it's, uh, you know, cloud-based. So if you're, I think now even, it, I'm not sure they even call it Office 365. I think they call it Microsoft 365 as these things change um, all the time. So uh, if you have the Office 2016 or 2018 or, you know, that's on your computer, I don't even think, you know, you don't even see forms as an option. It's just not included as part of it. So uh, I'm also experimenting with that myself. You know, uh, when do I open up the resident, you know, office and when do I open up Office uh, or Microsoft 365? So in any case, um, let's go ahead and try to uh, do a little bit of a needs analysis using a form. Uh, and so, uh, Anthony, if you don't mind, um, go ahead and drop uh, the link into the chat uh, so everybody can uh, either click on that or you can experiment with this cute little feature of a QR code. Uh, so if you have a mobile device, um, you may want to try this in addition to using the, or instead of using the uh, tiny uh, URL there, um, you know, open up your QR code reader, uh, depending on, you know, how you do it for your particular phone and, uh, you know, focus it on the QR code and hopefully it will open up to basically a one question form. Uh, that we can uh, take a look at. So I'll give you a few moments uh, to do that. Okay, great. Okay, so it looks like we've had 12 people uh, do the responses. And so uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, share with you uh, a little bit about that. Let me see if I can drag this uh, other screen over and let's see if that appears. All right, I may have to, there we go. It looks like everybody can see it. So um, there's the question, okay. And then um, by clicking over on the tab, uh, we can see that there are responses. And so this gives me an idea let me enlarge that a little bit. Okay, so that looks like it's a, a little bit easy to read, easier to read. So um, there's a nice little graphic, automatic uh, graphic. Uh, what is your familiarity with Microsoft Forms? So uh, we have uh, six participants uh, saying that um, didn't even know it existed. And uh, four saying, I've never filled one out. You've heard about it, but never filled one out nor created one. So that's 10 total uh, who I think will um, benefit. Uh, I have received one and completed it, but thought it was a Google form. Okay. Uh, and then we have uh, fewer people saying, I am familiar with uh, Microsoft forms and I've created at least one. And then uh, nobody is uh, bold enough to state that they are capable of teaching others. But I think that that will change really, really quickly. So in any case, so what's nice about this um, is that, uh, you know, you get the results right away and um, that can be very, very uh, beneficial uh, to you. Okay, let me get, get that out of the way. We'll go back to the presentation. Okay, so the first project that I want to talk about um, is just a basic questionnaire project. Uh, now, in terms of your semester, uh, it may not, this project may not be the first thing that uh, you would want to spring upon your students. Uh, but of, of course, that depends on what you're teaching and uh, what level. Uh, of English and familiarity with uh, computers that your students have. But uh, it's a really nice little introduction to uh, teaching the students uh, how to use 
uh, forms. So what I'm going to try to do uh, is uh, what I think you would you might want to do uh, in your own classes is in your uh, synchronous uh, presentation, you know, in a webinar or a Zoom meeting, you know, build the first couple of um, you know, questions together with your students uh, so that they can sort of see how it's done and then they can carry on from there. What's nice about these projects, they're very, very adaptable depending on what level, you know, you just request or require or grade your students on um, how much of the uh, maybe target vocabulary that you've been working on or target grammar or content uh, they include uh, in the form itself. Um, and so uh, that's what makes it so um, adaptable. Okay, so uh, if you have uh, Microsoft uh, 365 open, uh, and hopefully, you know, uh, you all have access to that, uh, through your uh, school district. It, I, I, I don't want to say exactly for sure, but I imagine that everybody does. Um, it, it may be the case that some of you don't. Um, but in any case, um, you know, when you open up uh, Micro Office 365, along the left side, you know, you see the icons representing uh, the different programs. And so scroll down until you see the one with the F for forms. Um, when you open that up, uh, right away, uh, you see some templates. Uh, and so we're just going to go ahead and start with the first one called New Form. And uh, this is your basic uh, form template. Um, there's not a lot there to see. Uh, you, you really only have two tabs, the questions and responses. Uh, you want to give the form a title uh, and you want to then click on uh, add new. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do is, let's see if I can resize this. And we'll, we'll, I'm going to uh, bring over a, a new form and let's see if I can click back and forth between the two. It's nice to have both the PowerPoint uh, open as well as the, um, the actual form so that uh, we can jump back and forth. So again, give the form a title. You just click on Untitled Form and give it a name. OK, uh, you can enter description if you want. Uh, and then you go right away to the Add New, and you get a little menu of question types. Okay, so uh, right away, you see four basic question types, choice, text, rating, and date. Uh, I'm going to start with text uh, because, we, you know, we want to get the information about the other teacher. So uh, I'm sorry about this, the student that is getting the form. And so um, we ask, you know, you can, you know, what is the student name? So student name and enter your answer. Now, uh, as you're doing that, you may want to see some of the other options. There really aren't that many choices. Actually, let me get my little uh, spotlight on. Let's see if I can get to the spotlight and get back to the get back to the form. Okay, so 
you have the four choices. I'm going to start with the one that is text. Okay. And so of the different things that you have here, uh, if you think the student may require or the, the question may require a longer answer, you can select longer answer. It gives you a little bit more space for them to respond. If you want to make it required, uh, you can make it required or not. Uh, you have a copy question, you have the delete question, uh, and then move the question up or move the question down uh, as you're working and building the questions. Okay, so if we go ahead and type. All right, so that's created the first question. Uh, doesn't really have to be a long answer. So there's our first one. And we're, we'll just say add new. And then you get that menu again, and you're ready for the, the second uh, question. Let me get back to the, got to get my menu bar back again. Okay, so that's that slide. Um, at any time, you can select the preview option or the preview button so that uh, you can see what it would look like to the person filling out the form. Okay. Uh, another nice little feature is that the uh, default view, let me, uh, the default view is computer but there's also a mobile option so you can see what it would look like uh, on a mobile device. Let me see if I can find that. So we've got our question, we, we go to preview. This is what it's like as a computer, but if you click on mobile, I think that's really cool that it gives you that, you know, what your students may see and obviously so many of our students um, are using mobile devices that this could be very, very uh, important. You go back to the editing. Okay, so you, some of you may have noticed that there was a down arrow to the right of date. And what that does is it brings up uh, a few more options, uh, ranking, Likert, and what they're calling net promoter score. And we'll, we will go over those uh, in one of the other uh, projects. And you can also create different sections. So uh, this is uh, a, a multiple choice. You may wanna experiment with multiple choice. Uh, and then notice that, for example, my question is, what is your family uh, status? and um, as soon as I started to type single, I got some uh, some suggestions, uh, which is sort of cool. And then you can just click on the, each of the individual suggestions that popped up to to include them. Uh, and of course, you can always you know add others uh, as you think of them. Note that you have the option to uh, allow multiple answers, and again, you know the same other options are still there. Okay, so that's a real standard uh, multiple choice. Uh, and, and remember, as you work through adding the questions, you can experiment with changing the order uh, of the questions. Okay. Additionally, uh, you have the, uh, the three dot menu. Uh, when you're doing multiple choice. Uh, some people call that the shish kebab. Uh, I sort of like that. Um, but this is where you get your options to shuffle uh, the, the responses. Uh, or instead of a multiple choice, uh, you know, with the, the dots, you know, you, you can get like a drop down uh, menu. Uh, and so that's, that's sort of cool. And then you can do the uh, add branching. Let me go back to the live version and I'll demonstrate the, um, the 
the add branching. Okay, so if we we're going to add a new question, we'll do a multiple choice. Okay, so let's say, uh, you know, the question is, um, you know, what uh, is your um, oops. educational uh, history? Okay, so maybe option one. Maybe uh, no education, no formal, say it that way, no formal education. Option two, elementary school. Add another option, uh, middle school. Add option, high school. Okay, college. And we'll just stop there for now. Okay, so now when I click on the three dots and I add branching, you see this is where you get uh, this idea that if a, you know if the question is is responded to using this one, then you can have the person taking the, the, the survey go to another question that could be related to the formal education. So again, this is probably not something that, you know, your beginning level students uh, will need uh, or, you know, students new to doing this, but you should be aware of it. It could come in handy for you. And then, you know, depending on what level of students you're working with, this may be something uh, of interest. So that's the branching option. Okay, so let's say uh, that you're uh, ready, uh, you know, with this form that you've got your questions. Uh, before you click send to, you know, distribute it, uh, there may be some other settings uh, that you, uh, you know, will want to. Uh, you know, look at first. So you, again, you find that at the three dots to the right of the send and click on settings. Uh, and you can see quite a few there. Uh, you know, it's, are you ready to accept the responses now? Uh, if you, uh, you know, are creating this in advance, you can set a start date and an end date. Uh, this is also where uh, the questions themselves can be shuffled uh, and uh, you can, you know, make sure that you get emailed uh, when somebody responds, if you want. Uh, the idea with the show uh, progress bar uh, is uh, you have to have uh, a certain um, number of um, questions or uh, it has to be like a quiz. So in any way, and also you can customize the thank you message. Uh, there are a few other uh, things that you can do uh, under uh, theme. Uh, you can change the colors uh, and insert other backgrounds uh, to the quiz. Uh, you know, some, some people may enjoy that. Okay, so uh, also uh, when you want to uh, share it, okay, then uh, you can, you, you, you know, make sure that you know whether or not the audience will have different, uh, you are, uh, different emails or are out of your organization. Uh, so for example, the, the one that we did together, uh, I selected anyone with the link can respond. The other option is only people in your uh, organization. Uh, so this option gives you a link. The second option is where you uh, get the QR code. The third option 
uh, allows you to embed. It gives you that embed code if you are working with web pages or uh, you, you can embed something into your LMS. Uh, that's where you get that code uh, and then uh, sending an email link. You're also giving an, given an option on this share uh, tab where you can get a link to duplicate it. So for example, uh, you, 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 you don't want to um, give them the ability to, to change your original form, but you want somebody to be able to take this form uh, and then make it theirs. They have a duplicate on their own uh, forms under their, their own account. Um, and so this may also be useful for you uh, if you create a, you know, a, a certain type of template. Uh, you can actually send it, for example, to your students. And then once they've made their own copy, then uh, they can edit that copy. So, you know, saving them perhaps a lot of the original design work, uh, you give them a basic template with certain questions already there and they just have to adapt the template. Uh, the final one, the collaborate one means uh, people who get that link can actually edit the original uh, form itself. So if you're working with other uh, colleagues on a, a particular form, uh, then they could all work uh, together. I'm just checking. Uh, okay, it doesn't look like we have any uh, questions at the moment. Okay, so then uh, as we did with the uh, the first uh, a needs analysis, uh, clicking on the responses form, uh, sorry, response tab uh, brings you to the results where you can see the results for your, your form. Okay, so um, let's take a little brief interlude here uh, to see if there are uh, questions from any of the uh, participants uh, for how to. So I'll take a look at the. Uh, Barry, hope. Yeah. Yeah, we did have one question. Um, you did mention that you were going to talk maybe later with another project about um, the ranking and Likert yeah, and the net promoter exactly. scores. So some of us, um, I'm trying, I think it was Irma, um, said that um, some of us also have an option called file upload. Um, do you know about the file upload option and why some people have it and others don't? Why some people have it and others don't. <laughs> so for example, Barry, actually I have file upload as an option for me. I'm wondering if maybe, um, do you think that Could it be might be a setting? Yeah, yeah, it might be your organization. So That's let me go I mean. back and um, where, where was that specifically? So remember um, when you wanna add a new question Okay, let's, so let's add a new yeah. question. And then it's the drop down on the far right. Okay. Oh, now you have it. So I have it. Let's say file upload. Oh, I think you know what it was, Barry, was in oh. your slide, the screenshot that you had in the slide didn't have that. It mm -hmm. wasn't showing that option, but it does look like that you also have that option as well. Well, let's see what it says. A new folder will be created in SharePoint. And I'm at a weakness here because I don't know what SharePoint is. Perhaps one of the other uh, participants will know what that is. Files uploaded by responders will be captured in this folder. Oh, well, this is similar to Google uh, Forms actually. So let's say for example, uh, as part of your form, you, say, you, know, you want people to um, attach a file and return it. So like your question says, you know, do you have a driver's license or something? And so, um, you know, you want them to take a picture of their driver's license. Uh, so then what that does is that creates like a down, you know, like a little dialog box where they, um, where the, 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 the respondent is prompted to attach a file from their computer. Does that make sense? I think so, Barry. And, and SharePoint is, yeah, uh, SharePoint is basically, I mean, you also have OneDrive on the Microsoft side. Mm -hmm. So, but we're, t we're talking about the storage space, like you said, is basically equivalent to Google Drive. So the f any folder, sorry, any files that 
your students or other users upload into the form are going to get sent off to that file that I you see. can access. So for, for example, I mean, like, for example, what is your educational history? And it would be like, you know, upload a transcript from your college. Exactly. And so then they can, that creates the possibility for them to do that. Uh, anything else? Barry, um, do you want, I, I'm not, I don't remember if you mentioned it or not. But if a, if a student is working on a mobile device, then um, do they need to download an app onto their phone? And what would that be? Um, is it just an Office 365 app? Or is it a Microsoft uh, Forms app? What is it exactly that they're putting on their phones? Um, this is part of um, Office or Microsoft 365. So however you would get, you know, if they're working on a mobile device, however they would get Office 365 onto their uh, computers or device, you know, you would have to do that. So I am, for example, I think that um, our students, some of our students have, you know, are issued Chromebooks, okay? And, you know, as part of that, uh, they, I think that they would probably have it available, but I, I can't be uh, sure. That would be something you may have to investigate for, you know, mobile devices in your organization or for your students to see, uh, you know, what they can have access to. Okay. Otherwise, I think that those were all the questions, Barry. Okay, thank you. Okay, so, so again, you can see how that first uh, project would go. The idea would be uh, that students create questions and then they distribute those questions to other members uh, of the class, okay? Uh, they collect the, the responses uh, and then they could either report that back, uh, you know, through their LMS, either as an assignment or, you know, as a presentation or as a discussion. Uh, and then the next part would just be, you know, a few other basic ideas for uh, how to, you know, use the idea of using forms for student projects. So I would call this one the tense questions project, but, uh, you know, it, it's a, uh, probably, you know, adaptable to uh, whatever grammar point that you're working on. So again, you know, if you're working with past tense, the instruction to the student would be, you know, in your form, create, you know, a series of past tense questions. So uh, I don't think um, I have to do anything extra in terms of a how to for this because it's just, you know, what are the, the what questions uh, are being asked by, uh, by the students. But again, uh, the point here is, uh, you know, you make you make the students practice doing their, you know, the, the grammar by giving them a task. You don't specifically have to, you know, uh, tell them, okay, uh, you know, you're going to do, you know, practice past tense. Uh, you could just say, look, you know, I want you to ask questions about what people did, you know, some, you know, last year. So you, uh, I call it past tense questions, but you could call it something else. So uh, another uh, simple project, uh, I think, which would be appropriate for low level uh, learners uh, in, in your classes, just really, really simple. Uh, uh, this one involves a picture. So I do want to show, uh, you know, how you get the picture uh, into the into the question. But uh, again, you know, students could either uh, look for the, you know, you could have students look for their own images, or you could provide them a bank uh, of images from which they could uh, select. So uh, let me go back uh, to the, uh, to the form. Okay, and we'll just add a new question. Actually, let me go ahead and find the. Uh, 
There we go, the past tense questions. Well, we'll just use this one that um, I started. So we'll add a new one, uh, make it a multiple choice. Okay. And then notice as soon as I roll over the, the question part itself, uh, we get a new little icon there at the end, insert media. And so then uh, it could be an image, it could be a video. Uh, you could have them, you know, go to the internet to search. Uh, you could provide them with a folder uh, already where they could, um, you know, find images that uh, you think are appropriate. Uh, they could upload from their own computer. So you may have a folder of photos just for the webinar or just for this project. You select the image and then it appears in the question. So I think you can see that it's really quite easy. Uh, you know, even once directed, even lower level students uh, could create a basic question uh, with an image uh, and it could be a lot of fun. Any questions about uh, the picture? Adding a picture to your question? Barry, I don't see any questions at okay. the moment. And then if you don't, you know, if you want to change pictures, uh, you just click on it and you get the little trash for the picture. See, it's different than the trash for the question. This is delete the question. This is just for the picture. Uh, and of course, even though the, as we noted, uh, at the beginning, while the focus is students creating these forms as instructors, of course, uh, you could really, uh, you know, make your own uh, exercises uh, for your for your students uh, using the same methodology. So, um, this one obviously, perhaps uh, for intermediate or higher level students. Uh, and again, uh, in terms of having the students do it, they would create the, you know, they would uh, create a form uh, concerning a product that they're interested in. So this particular example uh, says, you know, review a product. And um, what's nice about it uh, once we, once I show you uh, some of the uh, built-in tools, uh, it's really easy to create the, uh, you know, the little stars uh, and um, the other options. Uh, but what's nice about it, some of you who are in my um, previous workshops may, re may remember the uh, research project in which uh, students are asked, uh, you know, work in teams uh, or small, you know, small groups to uh, carry out a research project in which they ask uh, other students in the classroom, you know, like what's their favorite, um, you know, what's their favorite type of car or, you know, what's their favorite uh, brand of uh, cereal or what's the dessert that they like 
the most. So this uh, particular uh, type of question lends itself to that very easily. And then once they uh, you know obtain the results in the responses, they can then convert this uh, project into the res convert the data from the form into a research project, and then they can either present their their research. Uh, you know, synchronously or asynchronously uh, using Zoom or using, uh, you know, whatever uh, your LMS is. But let me um, go through this one uh, live. So, again, so you're probably familiar with these and you know, so many of us now, you know, we're buying things online and, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing these types of reviews happening. So this is something that uh, your students may uh, be really familiar with. Okay. Uh, notice, um, you know, you can give them an opportunity to uh, write, you know, more either a sentence or a short paragraph uh, about the review. Okay, uh, and then these are examples of the other two types of uh, questions. Okay, so um, this one is the uh, Likert uh, type scale uh, where uh, you select uh, a description, you know, you, you select the one that you think uh, is uh, the most uh, closest to your feelings. And then this is the one that they call the uh, score. Uh, how likely are you to recommend this textbook? And then they pick. So let's just take a look at this in preview mode. Okay, so again, select the response that describes your opinion the best. How useful are the practice exercises in the textbook? So student clicks on one, okay. Or how likely are you to recommend this textbook to a friend? Uh, another student or another teacher and, and you select one. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll go back to the how to, how to do that. We'll add a new question. Okay, let me try to move this, move the Zoom menu item out of the way so we don't see it. Okay, so again, we'll now this time we'll pick the down arrow for the more question types and we'll pick Likert scale and it gives you a little definition there used to gauge uh, attitudes and opinions. Okay, so this is your basic uh, template. Okay. So you pose your uh, you pose your question. Okay, uh, you have options here, but if you you can select different statements. Okay, so uh, you you may want to give a little bit more instruction. Okay, oops, sorry. How important is voting in an election? Select the uh response that best describes your opinion about the statement okay so you click on this the first one to posit your statement And then where it says option one, you can then select the default is they give you five, but you can add more. So this is where you insert uh, the ratings. And then, you know, you can do the two extremes. Do one in the middle. If, if you think you have too many, 
when you click on it, notice the little trash sign. So you can delete an option. Okay, how important is voting in an election? You could add another, you know, several things related to the same topic. Or if you don't want to add any extra, you just delete it. Or you can add another one. And again, there's the, you know, make it required or not. Okay. I always like to check how does it look? There you go. Okay, so let's go back, take a look at the other type of scale. So net promoter score. I'm not exactly sure why that gets a trademark, but somebody obviously must have trademarked that at some point. Okay, so again, here you have, you know, the basic place to um, insert your, your, the question. This is actually the default. How likely are you to recommend us to a friend or colleague? But you could change that. Okay, uh, notice you also have the, the image. So you could put a, you know, one of those pictures that you have. So, and then you have your built-in score. Uh, you could change that as well if you wanted. And then uh, let's take a look at it, preview. How likely are you to recommend this type of vehicle to your friend? There's the picture and then students can select the um, the rank, not likely to extremely likely. In any case, um, the other thing perhaps you've noticed over here, uh, this little uh, speaker icon popping up. Uh, what this does, it, it brings up a built-in uh, reader for uh, you know people who perhaps need uh, you know, some, it read out loud. It's called the immersive reader and it's built in to, to forms. Barry, we did have a question in the Q&A. Can you just remind us again how you got to the rating option? Sure. Okay, so let's say, um, let's go back one. Under the new, add new. So the the default is just the first four choices, but go ahead and click on the down arrow for more question types. And then here you see the two types. Um, there's also ranking. The ones I did were Likert and Net Promoter Score. So Likert, um, I want to say, as a memory from my um, the days when I did my master's in instructional technology is the name of a person who invented it. And so you have this, uh, this scale, you can, you know, you can make them as complicated as, as you want. So that's the Likert scale. Um, this net promoter score, again, it's got our little registered trademark there. So somebody must have invented that. But again, it's just another way to, uh, you know, get, 
let people know about an opinion uh, ranking. Same type of thing, you know. I think what you do is uh, let's actually let's try this out. Uh, let's see what list your favorite dessert in order. Okay, so let's say was cookies, cake, pie. Mm, muffin. Okay, so under the preview, see, okay, so you see you, you can move it up or down. So if, if pie is your favorite, you move that up to the top. So there could be quite a few, you know, uh, ways to that this could be fun for you know your students. How's that? So so again, it's all here. I mean, the truth is there are really very few uh, complications about these templates. Um, we'll go back. Okay you know you have the questions you have the responses okay again uh after you've made your form you want to take a look at the settings that are available to you okay you want to decide if you want to change the theme again these are you know totally optional but your students may enjoy them Okay, uh, and then you click on the share. Okay, so decide anyone with the link can respond or only people in your organization. Okay. This one generates the QR code. Okay, so uh, in order, what I did to get the QR code uh, into the presentation, I downloaded it, I saved it, and I inserted it uh, as an image. This gives you uh, embedding coding, the HTML. Uh, so, you know, you would have to know uh, how to actually make use of that to get it into the your learning management system or into your web page. And then this opens up, you know, like the typical email uh, interface. Here you can get a link to, uh, to duplicate. Again, this one, what it does is it, it it creates a little link here and you can email that to your students or you can email it to a colleague. Uh, when they open up the email, uh, it makes a copy in their own uh, Office 365. This link here uh, allows other people to um, actually edit this very uh, form. Let me go back uh, to the main forms menu Uh, this is sort of what it looks like. Very similar to Google uh, Drive in that you have, you know, the, the, the most recent things that you worked on across the top. You can search for them. Uh, one of the things that uh, we didn't do uh, is look at the new quiz. Very, very similar. Everything works in, in much the same way. Uh, but this, again, this would be for you uh, as the teacher, I, I imagine that you could ask students, uh, you know, sophisticated students to create quizzes for uh, other people, uh, you know, for other students in the class. But uh, the purpose of this uh, workshop today was mostly to look at uh, creating a new form. And you start all over again. Okay, so um, any particular questions at this point?
Barry, I don't see any questions okay. at the moment, but folks, if you do have questions, you can still post them um, in the Q&A box, which is at the bottom of your Zoom toolbar. Um, some people have been posting some questions there, but um, if you do have questions, go ahead and put them in the Q&A. Okay, well, uh, so I, I have one final um, participatory uh, form for you. So uh, if you don't mind, uh, again, uh, use the uh, QR code to uh, answer the following question that you'll find uh, at that form. Uh, and. Uh, Anthony, if you go ahead and uh, for those of you who don't have the for those participants who don't have a QR code reader, if you can drop that uh, URL uh, into the chat for everyone. So the question, uh, given what you've seen, uh, what type of form would you ask your students to create uh, as a project? Uh, and it can either be one that um, you, you, know, you saw today or a completely different new idea, uh, you know, depending on what it is that um, you are working with, you know, you're, the, the students that uh, you're working with. And so what I'll do is I'll go back to the, the back end. And we'll take a look at, at the responses as they come in. Oh, this form doesn't have any responses yet. Okay, we'll be patient. Okay, the responses are beginning to come in. Thank you. So you can see what's happening that, uh, you know, the, the responses are, you know, sort of coming in in real time. Okay, so um, the responses that we've received so far, uh, creating my own multiple choice quiz for content, uh, I learned this week. Okay, so uh, I, I, I'm interpreting that is that the student would create their own multiple choice quiz for the content the student learned. I, I hope that was the intent. Uh, evaluate the daily lesson practical uh, applications. So again, hopefully uh, that would mean uh, that the student would do that. Perhaps uh, maybe that would come from the, the, the teacher. Uh, use as a formative assessment during the class, uh, asking questions. So that one sounds to me more like, uh, you know, from the teacher uh, point of view. 
One of the other things about these uh, results, uh, you can open them up in Excel. So let's see if that works. Okay, so there we go. Uh, create a parts of the computer quiz. Okay, very nice. So again, there, that's another way to, to look at the results. Okay, so thank you for uh, contributing uh, to that part of the of the workshop. Uh, let's just uh, revisit the uh, the objectives. Uh, hopefully, uh, you are now all able to uh, demonstrate um, to your students, uh, you know, some simple projects using Microsoft Forms, so that the students can uh, make use of the this tool and of course uh, hopefully now you can all create forms uh, yourselves that would be those were the objectives so uh, if, unless there are any further uh, questions uh, from you uh, what I'd like to do is uh, hand the uh, the workshop the webinar back over to Anthony uh, so he can do the wrap up. So thank you so much uh, for being with us today, learning about uh, Microsoft uh, 365, Office 365 and Forms. Uh, and also thank you, Anthony, uh, for being here to, to support that. And also, I, of course, let's thank OTAN for providing this, uh, this opportunity.